Sometimes when I sit down to tie something for the show, I just grab a book that I haven't tied out of in a while, and look for something cool. And I knew I wanted to tie a dry fly today, so I grabbed Paul Jorgensen's Dry Fly Patterns for the New Millennium, published in 2002. And I found one for today that looked fun to tie, had a really cool name, and was tied for Paul's book by one of the legends in our sport. The pattern is called The Regulator, and it was tied for Paul's book by Al Beatty. Now, an online search of this pattern turned up absolutely nothing. So I was wondering, how could that be? It's such a cool name for a fly. The pattern does look pretty similar to other flies out there, as tied in the book, and how I'm about to tie it with a red body. It does look a lot like several variations of a Royal Coachman, particularly ones tied with a hair wing trude style. And obviously, I've never fished this pattern, never even tied it until today, but I really like the looks of it. And I did make one substitution in this one. Al used a white calf body hair for the wing, and I know I had some somewhere, but I couldn't find it, so I substituted a white deer body hair, which is a pretty similar material. It might be just a little bit coarser, but I think it's gonna behave the same. So there it is in the vise, a regulator from Paul Jorgensen's dry fly patterns for the new millennium. And this particular pattern was tied by the legendary Al Beatty for Paul's book. So let's pinch this barb right here. I did not get it right there. Let's try it again. I think that got it. Now this is a 3X long. It's what I use for a lot of big dry flies and hoppers and terrestrial patterns. The pattern didn't specifically call for a 3X long, but I think it works on this one and red thread. I'm going with a, a 140 denier. I am starting it up front because the body is just red thread and starting it up here will give us two layers when we take it back up front. Now there's no tail, but we do have a peacock curl for a butt. So start your thread where you really want the front of the butt to be. And I think right there is where I am or don't start your thread, I mean leave your thread there. So let's catch this in a few wraps back and then you can just break these off. They're still pretty brittle right there. So a few extra wraps back and if I wrap that up, is that gonna be a big enough butt? I think it is. Everybody likes a big butt. So let's go ahead and wrap this up and I just broke one of them. So what do you do there? You just catch it in again and just a reminder to be careful. This peacock curl is pretty brittle, certainly when you're working from the small end. So we're fine. Still got our thread right there. Just be careful and try not to hit the point of your hook as you wrap this up. You might get five or six wraps depending on how big of a butt you want. Okay, a couple rats to secure that. You saw those, they were coming apart a little bit, but they didn't get so far apart that we couldn't finish it. So I think we're fine. We've got a decent sized butt right there. Now you might want to spin your thread counterclockwise to flatten it out a little bit or just not worry about it and wrap these up touch and turns just so you can get another layer of thread all the way back up front. Now here's where I'm going to have to differ just a little bit from what the pattern called for. Um, Al's pattern was white calf body hair, not calf tail, calf body hair. And this looks pretty much like it, but it's not. It is white deer body hair. So it's pretty similar and it will stack pretty well. So just take a medium sized tuft, medium to small, I guess. Put it in your stacker, see if you can get it stacked well. I think we did. Now just measure the length. We want it a little bit past the bend. Actually, I need to take my thread a little bit back because we do want a pretty big thorax. So let's go back a couple of millimeters right here. And is that enough? Yeah, one more. How about that? Okay, now measure it again. See where we want this. Okay, I think that's gonna be good right there. Now I'll spin my thread clockwise, cord it up a little bit so I can get a pretty tight bite right here. Now this is gonna flare up front and that's fine. If it flares in the back, we'll have to take care of it, but don't worry about it flaring up front just yet. Get three or four good tight wraps to hold that in. Now let's snip the front, and you might have to do this in uh, a few wax. Uh, 
Okay, I think we've gotten most of that. Now let's spend a few wraps just trying to clean up this front. We'll worry about the back in a second. Just want to flatten this out a little bit so we can get a smoother thorax when we wrap some peacock curl and hackle here in just a second. But before we do that, take a look at your wing. Make sure you've got the right amount. Still want to see some of that red. And right there, I've got it coming off the sides. You can see that. So I'm going to reach in here and just snip some of the ones on the side so that my wing isn't, you know, too big. Okay, that's probably fine right there. Let's do the same thing on this side over here. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Let's do a few more wraps to clean this up right here. Now we are going to build a big thorax and then kind of palmer some hackle up in it. So first we'll catch in the hackle. And the picture in the book was a brown hackle, but it also said color of your choice. But I'm gonna stick with brown. So let's pull that around till we get the right length. And let's just catch it in at the back of our thorax right here. And I'm leaving that stem a little bit long. It'll help smooth this area out right here. A few extra wraps going up. Snip this butt right here. Now we'll take that same peacock curl we used in the butt. We've got plenty of it left. And we're gonna catch it in up here. And if you have any excess, you can snip it or maybe just loose wraps and pull it back a little bit. And I pulled it too far right there. I'm just making a mess out of this fly. But in the end, it's gonna be okay. It happens to all of us. Okay, so keep this curl, wind it to the back here and then take your thread up front. And I'm gonna to have to just snip that because it's too short for me to grab with my stubby little fingers. But we're gonna be just fine. Now let's wrap this peacock curl up. We should have enough to get a pretty thick thorax right here. And that thread under it is gonna help, you know, give us a thick thorax as well. So whatever it takes, five or six wraps to get you up front. And about now, these stems are getting a little thick, so I'm not gonna try and break them off. I'm just gonna snip them. And now, let's palmer this hackle. Four or five wraps is gonna be fine, just not real close together, because you wanna see some of this peacock girl. I think we're only gonna get four wraps, because any more, and I would be really clobbering my eye here. Okay, let's pull these back, make a little room for our whip finish. And it's a dry fly, so we don't want a huge head here. Now let's see if we have any cleanup. And I do, I've got a couple of hairs or fibers from that hackle going forward. So I could either snip or singe or just not worry about them as long as I can still get my tippet up through there through the eye there, and I can. So take a look, how's the wing doing? Do we need to trim any more off the side? Because remember, you kind of want this red showing when the back end of this fly is sitting down in the water. So it might, we might want to trim a few of those, but overall, I think we've got a pretty fishable fly here. So that's it, my friends, the regulator. Pretty fun pattern. I appreciate y'all watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.